Hello and welcome to week three in Statistics for Psychology and we move away from the introduction and the basic philosophies of using numbers to describe reality into applications. And in this first application, we're looking at data itself, defining what that is, and distributions, the term distributions. We're going to examine those terms. Data meaning the unit, a, a figurable item, let's say my age, and then a distribution, we kind of, we kind of have a sense of like, like Johnny Appleseed distributed, you know, how often that, you know, there's this distribution of seed. That's not what is a distribution is a sample of a whole bunch of people's ages. That would be a distribution. We actually kind of look at it like a group statistic of some kind or a, or a, uh, we say of all the people that work at KVCC, how many people or age 50 and above, that would, and we put all those people together, that would be a distribution. And in fact, the statistic of, that would compare ages to answer that question, not only 50 and above, but who's, you know, 40 to 49, who's 30 to 39, you know, the, the relative numbers of each one of those is called a frequency distribution, like if there's 10 of each, the 10, 10, 10, 10, that collection of numbers related to how many there are that share a particular characteristic, it's called a frequency distribution. So you have your sample and the numbers associated with those people that you're looking at, that's a distribution, a collection of numbers. You have data, which is all of that. And then you have frequency distribution, which is going to be one of the things that you're going to do in your homework and learn how to do a frequency table. So in the discussion, I'm having you talk about frequency distributions as they appear in the media, usually in a table graph or somebody's going to spout out, well, this many people have been involved in, in school shootings or this many people have had uh, scary incidents happen while they were ballooning. Uh, this many people have eaten screwdrivers, whatever. The notion is when somebody quotes that kind of number, what they're talking about is a frequency distribution. The quiz is going to have you look at descriptive information and frequency distribution is one of a collection of things that we can gather about a distribution that tell us something about that distribution. These are descriptive statistics. They are not predictive statistics. Now, we're going to get into those later. Descriptives, the most common set of statistics that you come across are frequency distributions, mean, standard deviation, variance, range, all of these, these are things we're going to cover over the first couple chapters. These are things that we use to describe data. And in the field of psychology, sometimes the answer to the question that we're looking for is found in the descriptive data. That's it. That might be the research that we're doing. We're going to go and find out how many people actually watched the episode, the last episode of Gilligan's Island. We want to find that out. So we do a research and we find out that in today's population, 10% of the live population right now actually watched that on the day it was aired. There you go. A frequency distribution. Maybe I have a raw number or a comparative number to the rest of the population, such as a percentage. That'd be just, that's how we answer questions. In addition, when we are using predictive and inferential statistics, which is what we're going to get to later in this course, we often include descriptions of the data that we have collected. That is to be, that's full disclosure on doing research. I'm going to tell you what my sample distribution looked like. I'm going to tell you very often demographic data related to age, gender, sex, education status, income levels, whatever it is, all these kinds of data that we collect about people. And then when we make conclusions in the other kinds of statistics, we can say, well, it applies to people like this. 
we've described. If you have a group of people that you're looking at and their demographics match the descriptive statistics, you're probably going to end up with the same results. So it's a full disclosure in all of the research that you read. Oftentimes when you're going through the results section, the first component is descriptive statistics describing their sample. In the quiz, you're going to be talking about descriptive and inferential statistics. And then we're going to look at populations, operational definitions, and scales of measurement. We'll be learning a little bit about those. The assignment is having you take a distribution of numbers and create a frequency distribution chart. You are going to have to look up this skill. The example that I use in the, in the course book, I believe, is limited to just a frequency distribution of individual scores. I'm asking you to do a frequency distribution of a range of scores. And I'll use my example from before. If I wanted a frequency distribution of people's ages and years at KVCC, I could create a bar graph that implicates how many people are age 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 28. So there could be an individual bar representing the age of every possible score. However, Excel also lets you, it is, enables you to create a range. How many people are in their 20s? How many people are in their 30s? How many people in 40s? And in the count, I want everybody that's in the 20s would be 20 to 29. Any one of those scores would mean that person falls into that single category and I can get a frequency, the number of people at KVCC that are in their 20s. So doing a range is something that you have to look up. So YouTube is a great tool. How do I create a range frequency table in Excel? Just write that out. In the, in the search on YouTube, you'll probably get about a hundred videos. Find the best one that works for you and learn how to do that. It's a very small change to the actual formula that you're using. We're still in the formula. We're not doing the plugin yet. They're doing the formula and then it's a change to that showing you some of the flexibility of Excel, but also showing you how you have to be careful with like the greater than, less than signs, greater than, equal to, you know, those kinds of, to show where that delineation is in your scores. So that's a little problem solving around this assignment. I'm not giving you the methodology necessarily to do that. You can go and figure that out. So make sure that you do look that up. And, um, Frequency, I, I was going to discuss this a little bit earlier, but I looked up some, uh, my, my brother is sort of a logical conspiracy theorist. He likes to look up data to see if it conflicts with stories that are out there. And while he was in the military, he was also um, you know, very cognizant of terrorism activities. And so he, was often, he would often say that we've uh, overreacted to terrorism. Now, I'm not saying that it's, we should ignore it, that, not in any way, but there are certainly ways in which there are certainly things out there that are much more dangerous than terrorism. And he sent me some statistics here. So, I'm, so right now, uh, let's see if I can uh, find the, the, in terms of uh, U.S. terrorism here, the latest statistics. It's looking like one in 1.3 million people suffers death on an annual basis due to terrorism. One in 6,100 die because of a drug overdose. So the statistical question would be, which one is more dangerous you know we might we might come to the conclusion you know, depending on what your job is if your job is to work uh you know in the military or defense industry of course your focus is on 
reducing terrorism, not only here, but abroad. But if we're going to look at, you know, what is the greatest risk of our society right now, we would see drug overdoses far more common than terrorist attacks. Yet the funding that goes into trying to deal with that, however we're going to do that, it's a difficult question to, to answer. So is fighting terrorism. But from when we look at descriptive data, sometimes it tells us some interesting things. Things, you know, traffic accidents far exceed that. The highest one is cancer. One in 545 people every year. One in 545 people in the U.S. die due to cancer. That statistic comes it's dated. 2015, you'd have to look, I'm, I'm just using this as an example, so I just dove into some statistics here, but um, certainly way higher uh, risk to human life than uh, some other things. And uh, even, um, look, there's lightning, there's, you know, in the period in the U.S. Uh, between 2002 and 2016, there, you were much more likely almost 12 times more likely to get hit by lightning than where you were to be a victim of a terrorist activity. Um, now, of course, there's moral things that go along with those things about you know, what terrorism represents and, and whatnot. But just an example of why descriptive statistics alone can bring us into interesting places and interesting conversations. So... This is not minor stuff. All right, so have a great week. I'm looking forward to the discussion on frequency charts in the news and what's going on and seeing how you tackle this uh, second Excel assignment here. So have a great week.